जय जय श्री राधे श्री वल्लभादे ही शखी जय सुबह वैष्णव को जय श्री कृष्ण श्री गिरिराज धारण की जय टुडे इज डे सिक्सटी टू एंड वार्ता नंबर फिफ्टी वन द स्टोरी ऑफ जीवन दास क्षत्रिय फ्रॉम सिमहानंद इन दर्नल लीला Jeevan Das is a sakhi of Sri Yamuna ji named Ishwari. He was born into a Kshatriya family in Simhanand. When his elder brother reached about 19, their father left Simhanand for Delhi to work as a broker. Jeevan Das was very attracted to song and dance and spent all the money he earned on prostitutes and artists. He lived off his father's earnings. When his father found out what Jeevan Das was doing he became very angry he forbade him to go to these dance performances ever again Jeevan Das said he would not go anywhere any more but he really couldn't live without it he did it in secret but his father still found out his father ordered him to return to Simhanand you are not suited to living in a city the father gave Jeevan Das 2 rupees to travel He told him to go home and stay and stay there for some time and thereafter to come back. Jeevan Das started on his way but began to think about seeing dance some dance. In Simhanand everyone knew him. He reasoned so he would not be able to do it there. He stopped in his tracks and stood there for about 2 hours. Then a singer and his retinue came past on their way to Agra. Jeevan Das asked who they were and where they were going. They replied that they were singers and dancers and they had come from the west and were now going to Agra. Jeevan Das considered what that agra was also a big town and thought it useless to go home so he went to agra with the troop he traded in cloth for a job and survived off that he spent at least half of half of it on the dance shows three years passed like this his father thought he must have died on the way home or gone far away maybe he even joined a dance troupe he thought and sat down to cry once in agra an aggressive thief dressed up as a decent man and came to Jeevan Das pretending to to want to buy a lot of the, a lot of the best cloth Jeevan Das went to the market and brought 100 rupees worth of cloth from a trader there he and the thug began to bargain and night fell the thug told Jeevan Das that he would choose and pay in the morning come here early in the morning he said impressed by his clothes and jewelry Jeevan Das thought that he thus must be a good man he spent the whole night at the dance shows the thief stole all the cloth and left there was no one there when jeevan das arrived in the morning he asked around and was told that the man was indeed a thug that he had ripped off quite a few others also jeevan das went to the cloth merchant and explained what had happened the merchant had no sympathy and locked him up 3 days passed without his eating or drinking Jeevan Das said to the merchant listen i am surely going to die now please do something for me i shall write a letter to my father who is a broker in delhi and also to my home in simhanand somehow or other i shall return your money now please let me bathe in the sri yamunaji river there is talk that in the village all sri avalabacharya's disciples are saying that just by bathing in sri yamunaji or by drinking her waters that one's grief can be allayed that one can even be granted a new body i don't think that vaishnavas would lie please let me bathe in sri yamunaji and then we can talk about getting your money back the cloth merchant decided to be kind to him by letting him bathe in some yamunaji water within the confines of his house only so that then he would eat jeevan das said that the best merit is gained by bathing in the stream itself and asked to be allowed to do so saying as well that he would not drink water until he had done so my throat is dry he said and i will surely die soon my death will be upon you the merchant da- called four men who tied jeevan das's hands together and then took him to the river to bathe don't let him drown he said hold him tightly the four men tied him up and led him to the river banks they made him bathe at their place shri acharyaji was performing his evening prayers 10 or 20 vaishnavas were singing shri acharyaji caught sight of jeevan das and he asked who is this four men have tied him down please bring him over here All the Vaishnavas approached the four men and asked them to bring him to Sri Acharyaji which they did. Sri Acharyaji said to him, "Well, Jeevan Das, would you like to see some more dancing?" Jeevan Das replied, "Oh Maharaj, I'm suffering this fate as a result. I did not listen to my father, so now I am this in this sorry state." Sri Acharyaji told Krishna Das to get hold of 100 rupees from somewhere and go to buy Jeevan Das's way out of the punishment by giving his name. All the Vaishnavas there said that they would go and do that, so it was not necessary to send Krishna Das alone. Shri Acharyaji told them to go quickly to free him. The Vaishnavas 
I took Jeevan Das to the merchant and gave him the 100 rupees in exchange for his freedom. Then they brought Jeevan Das back to Sri Acharyji. Jeevan Das prostrated before him and supplicated, O oh, Maharaj, you have freed me from this captivity, but now please free me from the jail of the material world. Glory be to Sri Yamanaji and to your Vaishnavas. Once I had been to some Vaishnava's house in Simhanan for some work, and I heard them discussing that bathing in Sri Yamanaji takes away all one's grief and gives one a new body. They were telling the truth. Just now I have bathed and all my worldly sadness has gone. Now with your grace only my all my grief... Now, with your grace only, all my grief in this material world will also disappear. If you allow me to become your disciple, I shall get a new body. Thus, your Vaishnavas should be praised, for there is no end to the rewards gained by a single second of their association. Sri Acharyaji told Jivandas to go in their association. Sri Acharyaji told Jivandas to go and bathe in Sri Yamanaji, and when he returned, he initiated him with the Lord's name and Brahma Sambandh. Sri Acharyaji also instructed him to accompany him to Simhanand, because he thought that if Jivandas were to stay in that place, he might get again get corrupted by bad association. Sri Acharyaji then went to one Vaishnava's house and prepared the offerings. After the seva was complete, he took prasad and then gave his leftovers to Jivandas. He had been fasting for three days, and so when he had this Mahaprasad on the fourth day, his body was completely restored. Taking Jivandas with him, Sri Acharyaji then set out for Taneshwar. From there he met one Vaishnava, sent one Vaishnava to Simhanan to go to Jivandas's home and tell them that he was there. Jivandas's father could not wait and came running to Tarnishwar to see his son. Crying, he embraced him to his chest and told him he had thought that he had died. Jivandas recounted the whole story of how Sri Acharyaji had set him free and then graced him. But you will need to do something, he said to his father. Bring my wife, mother and everyone else in the family and all come here to become Sri Acharyaji's disciples. Then only will I come home. Otherwise, I will not live in that house. Jivandas's father agreed to bring everyone from home there and promised they would do whatever he told them to. Jivandas's father did exactly this and then he addressed Sri Acharyaji, You saved my son's life and this is a great reward for me. We all wish to take your shelter. Please initiate all of us. Sri Acharyaji initiated them all with the Lord's name. Jivandas asked him to give them all Brahmasambanda. However, however, Sri Acharyaji said, They are not qualified to take that second initiation. They will be uplifted by the name alone. Jivan Das asked what his duty now was. Sri Acharyaji gave him some of Sri Navanit Priyaji's prashadi clothing and told him to take this home and offer seva to it there. Jivan Das, together with his wife and parents, all bowed down to Sri Acharyaji, took their leave and returned to Simhanand. Once they were there, Jivan Das requested his parents to give him the 100 rupees that Sri Acharyaji had paid to free him from captivity. His parents recognized that it was not at all good to be in debt to the guru and so they sold cloth and jewelry to the value of 110 rupees his father told jivan das to immediately take this to their guru so that they did not owe him anything jivan das went to sri acharyaji and gave him all the money sri acharyaji said that it was not really necessary for him to be so worried about that debt you are one of my family he said i am very pleased with you and so you didn't need to bother it was not a problem jivan das said o maharaj I am not worthy of you. You have done me a massive favour and so I should offer you hair, every hair on my body. I am willing to be sold wherever you wish to settle, sell me. I am happy to be your unpaid slave. I was suffering in the realm of birth and death and you have liberated me from that. Hearing these very humble pleas, Sri Acharyaji was now most pleased and he spoke thus to Jivan Das. The joys and sadnesses of the material world will now have no effect on you. Whatever heartfelt desire you have towards Sri Takaji will be fulfilled. Go home now and serve the Lord. Jivan Das paid his respects and went home. Sri Acharyaji went off on his Holy Grace pilgrimage and Jivan Das stayed at home and lovingly served the Lord. He always kept the loving company of other Vaishnavas. Soon Sri Takaji began to let him have his direct experience. Part 1 one time, all the Vaishnavas of Simhanan decided to go to Adel to visit Sri Acharyaji. Jeevan Das was with them. They stopped, made a camp, and all the Vaishnavas were cooking on the, in their own spots. A rainstorm approached. Black clouds surrounded them, and big drops of rain were falling from the sky. The Vaishnavas were not able to continue their cooking. Jeevan Das told them all not to worry. He turned towards the clouds and said, In the name and honour of Sri Acharyaji, I order you to stop. The rain indeed ceased. The Vaishnavas completed their cooking, offered the preparations to the Lord, and then partook of the prasad. 
Then they all went to sleep in their own tents. Jim and Das again spoke to the storm. OK, you don't need to hold back any more. Rain as much as you like. The rain fell. All the Vaishnavas were astonished to see this and commented that Jim and Das had godly powers. Then they all arrived in Adel and bowed down to Sri Acharyaji. They were discussing the Vaishnavas' issues when one piped up. On the way, we were all cooking and a big storm came overhead. Jeevan Das took an oath by you and the rain stopped. Sri Acharyaji asked Jeevan Das, what would you have done if you had taken my name and the rain had not stopped? Jeevan Das just said, knowing it to be your wish, which cloud would have dared to shower rain? If it had, I would bo- pull it both and even injure himself to the ground. Sri Acharyaji did not argue. This was the kind of Vaishnava Jeevan Das was. He was a recipient of great grace and most accomplished. Bhav Prakash. One doubt may arise here that Jeevan Das was a great Vaishnava, so why did he not take his own oath but took Sri Acharyaji's instead? It is true that if Jeevan Das had taken his own oath for it not to rain, then it would not have. However, Jeevan Das did not want in any way to increase his fame in case he became egotistical. Then he would fall down. And Sri Acharyaji would be displeased because he would have unnecessarily caused Sri Thakurji to make too much effort. In this way, Jeevan Das knew the principles of the Pushtimad very thoroughly. He only displayed Sri Acharyaji's glory to the Vaishnavas. Thus concludes Varta 51, the story of Jeevan Das Kshatri from Simhanand. Although in reality, there is no end to his story. Sri Vallabhadi Shiki Jai, Aj Ke Anandaki Jai. Sabi Vaishnavan ko Ardik Saprem Sadar Jai Shri Krishna Jai Jai Shri Radhe